Uh, thanks very much. I'm here to talk about my um, perspective as a researcher and PI on a funded PCORI grant. And PCORI requires both stakeholder and community engagement as part of the application process, which was really a different process for me because before writing for PCORI, I had only submitted grants to the NIH or, or smaller foundations. So for me, it's helpful to do comparisons in my mind between the NIH and, and PCORI. So if anyone is interested in that funding mechanism, I'm happy um, to talk more, more about it. So just an overview of the specific study. Um, it is a pragmatic research study that's looking at different dosing of rehabilitation for children with um, cerebral palsy. And the real goal is to help patients make informed decisions about their health care. And I think uh, I added this last line just this morning. Um, I've heard from Jeff and from the speaker just before me about being really true to the kind of spirit of your question and your stakeholders. And I think when you're creating a stakeholder panel and designing a research question, you really need to be genuine because people can tell if it's not. It can't be forced. So I'll try to also um, talk about where I found ways to make that um, relationship and um, experience genuine. So. In general, we are doing a randomized control trial. It's a very standard randomized control trial with um, kind of traditional methodology. So we screen participants, we do medical chart reviews, we screen participants, we um, ask for consent for randomization. We randomize the participants into two arms. One is a high intensity periodic arm and one is an everyday weekly um, arm. And we look at short term and long term effects. So when we were Designing this study, um, it goes way, it goes, um, the story kind of goes before we started designing the study. I am a pediatric physical therapist by clinical training. So family-centered care is central to that sort of rehabilitation. You're always talking to the family, always kind of considering the family as the expert on their child and their child's motor development. So that part for me in using family-centered care as kind of an example of what a stakeholder group might look like or how to engage other um, disciplines was, was more natural for me. And I think if you think about your own discipline, you can probably find ways that it is very natural for you as well. So I challenge you to consider that you might already be doing some of this, and then you can just use the framework that was provided this morning to make it more formalized or make sure you're not missing any um, components of engaging stakeholders. So for the in the beginning of this project, the researcher was really me, and I was working on things like this, a theoretical path model of dosing. But if we look at the very um, end of this dosing model, the goal is functional independence for children with cerebral palsy to the best extent possible. And both clinicians in the clinic and parents have that same goal too. So that is where we we've started. Then um, around the same time that I was trying to create um, with other colleagues that theoretical model that I showed you, we had some clinicians who were developing higher intensity models for rehabilitation. And this means that kids might come to the clinic every day instead of once a week or once a month, which of course um, puts different kinds of um, pressure or opportunities on the family, getting the children there, taking time off school or not. You know, th there are a lot of things to consider. But then we also found at the same time in conversations with parents that a lot of parents are seeking out higher intensity models. They're sending their kids to camp just to work, as, work on motor skills, where they might be working on motor skills every day for six weeks. And we also found that sometimes parents are paying for these things out of pocket, but they're not, and they might not be available in the clinic. We also found when we looked at our clinical programs that there were higher intensity programs for older children or children who were um, able to do things like sports, but not for younger children or children who were less mobile. So we kind of took this perspective of research, clinic, and parents and found kind of a common gap. And that's when we started um, proposal development. So the first thing we did was we did a pilot program that was really initiated by the clinicians where they did a high intensity model for this population. And they involved parents in the design, but also to try to understand if it was, if it was feasible. And then they also surveyed participants and looked and then published those results. Then we looked at protocol design. We involved parents and other um, clinicians in our grant writing process and in the submission. They provided letters of support for the PCORI application. Um, we also did some stakeholder events with other community partners that have been mentioned here before, such as the March of Dimes. And then we had some specific stakeholder um, 
focused meetings. So for example, we had parents specifically talk about randomization. We gave them that topic. And th what the bottom line was that the parents came back to us was that they understood randomization, but they didn't like it. And that's something that we didn't know before we brought that voice into our, into our whole research team. And now all of these um, community partners, including parents, are part of our stakeholder panel. So we have stakeholder meetings quarterly, now that the project is, fu is funded, where we always do things like rev review roles and responsibilities. We report on the current status of the project, and that includes things like recruitment and enrollment. Um, we update the stakeholders on any changes. We have made some changes. For example, a change was made with parent stakeholders, but we needed to update the rest of the community. We might do brainstorming for the entire year, and we also solicit recommendations for how the project is, is going. So the real um, role of the, com this is what we think the real role of the community is. Um, and one just quick comment is that we have physician stakeholders on our panel and we have parent stakeholders on our panel and they're paid the same. So everyone is paid the same and has the same um, expectations for participation. So everyone has, a, but everyone might have a different level of job involvement. If you have a larger level than just a stakeholder, you might be paid more. But for just stakeholder participation, everyone is paid the same. And so we ask that our stakeholders attend three out of the four um, stakeholder meetings per year. So uh, this morning, I really liked the framework that was presented on how to do design workshops. How we developed the grant proposal was we focused on community partners. So we thought, who are the community partners that we want to engage? Who has any kind of hand in promoting functional independence for children with cerebral palsy. So this was the list of community partners that we came up with. And then we um, targeted specific individuals who either we'd worked with before or we introduced ourselves to community partners and asked for volunteers. And some of these organizations might have more than one representative, but we felt like we had really covered um, all of the stakeholders who are interested in, in children with cerebral palsy. So we, this project has been going on for about a year and a half. And everyone has a contract. So as, as I'm sure you can imagine, when you're, there might be a lot of excitement in the beginning, but then um, there are some responsibilities that people have to do. So we really made the language pretty specific in our contract. They have to attend three out of four meetings per year to get paid. They have to contribute to either the making or disseminating of materials. So all of our stakeholders constantly revise our flyers for recruitment. And so we, you know, each time we have a meeting, we might update those things, and that requires an amendment to the IRB, but we do it, and we think it has, a, um, has made a difference. Um, they have to contribute to recruiting participants in some way or patients in some way. And, they, and then it might be individualized, so they might contribute to the project as blank for parents that might be different than physicians. And then also assist with um, needs as they come up. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about PCORI or this um, project. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you.